And, you know, I think I think a lot of the audience will come out liking this guy because, again, Omar. Omar Sa- he's, he's, Omar. He's, he's always been full of charisma. Oh, yeah. He's got great charisma in this. And he gets some of the – to me, for a movie that's, you know, trying to be a comedy in most parts, he has some of the best comedy. He actually in had my, yeah, yeah. My, my biggest laugh in the movie. Yeah. I know yeah. which one that is. Yeah, I, I, I know that was one that is. Caught me off guard. <laughs> well, I heard your ass laugh across the theater, man. Yeah. For that part. Yeah, the movie, like, stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It caught a lot of people off guard, man. Double Toasted Live in Los Angeles is going to be Saturday, April 27th for a night of comedy games and that after party. Let's see how we land on this one. And this is one you saw. Mm -hmm. So the movie we about to get into, man, I've been looking forward to this movie that we're about to talk about ever since I found out who the director is, uh, which is James Samuel right here. And this is a picture of him before he goes out cat burgling. Uh, For real. I say, God, that is a fucking evil. Uh, he's going out fighting crime. You know, I don't know what he's about to do, but but he even has a superhero or criminal name, mm-hmm. super villain name. He goes by the Bullets. Right. The Bullets. They're <laughs> like, all right, calm down. You ain't caught a bullet in your life. Like, yeah. <laughs> Shit, if anything, you ain't 50 Cent now. <laughs> the Bullets. You ain't even had one bullet. Exactly. The Bullets. Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> what are you doing, sure. man? But I will tell you this. I don't, you know, I might be making fun of his name. But as far as I'm concerned, he earned that name, man. You know, uh, because he did a movie that I really enjoyed not mm-hmm. too long ago. He did uh, a take on a uh, on a genre, a, a, an all black, or just about all black take on a genre, the western. Which uh, it was a Netflix movie, and y'all might know which one I'm talking about. It's a movie that I loved when it came out. What exactly he do to you? Call it a professional robbery. Now, see, this was back when yeah, Jonathan Majors couldn't talk. <laughs> you remember? Not today. He's in full Kang mode. No, yeah. <laughs> but back then, he was... <laughs> I know who you are. With no mercy. Uh, yeah, folks. That's the harder they fall. Yeah, uh, yeah this that's was a really uh, good one, too. V- oh, it's amazing. It's a very stylish Western that, uh, that he directed. Like I said, uh, all black cast, pretty much. And now he's taking that approach to... A genre that's even bigger. Jesus. You know say? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I, yeah, man. Uh, and why not? Jesus was black. <laughs> so sure, what, yeah. Why not make his homies black? <laughs> you know? Come on, man. Uh, actually, this is not the story of black Jesus, but it's a black Clarence. And <laughs> black Clarence? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just Clarence. <laughs> just for clarity, man. <laughs> just in case anybody had any doubts. Uh, who doesn't really believe in all the mythical hype about Jesus. But that doesn't stop him from trying to be one of his disciples and later trying to steal his street cred. You know, because right now what he's trying to do with uh, walking around like Jesus and talking about he performs miracles like Jesus, he's uh, he's actually trying to get out of uh being killed by a local gangster, mm-hmm. the local job of the hood. <laughs> <laughs> killed by Lamar. The, yeah, the kingpin. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the kingpin for them. Some dude named somebody the terrible. And <laughs> and uh, and he's doing this by going out there and trying to convince people that, you know, Jesus ain't none. I'm that new Messiah that y'all looking for. And he hopes that this will get him off the hook with this, with this, with this, this gangster that he owes money to, while also hoping that he'll get the gang, the said gangster's little sister as his woman. Now, Clarence has either got to be the most ambitious young man I've ever seen, or the dumbest that's out there. <laughs> and you decide. You decide. <laughs> <laughs> either way, it, you know, him trying to get out of this situation, it has to at least be entertaining to see how it works out. Or is it? Well, that's what we're here to tell you. So let's go ahead and take a look at this trailer for The Book of Clarence. Jesus of Nazareth. I'm a god, so when you see me, say hallelujah. Neo. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> yeah, Jesus in this, he's pretty much an X-Man or something, man. <laughs> he's got superpowers. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually heard somebody say, well, man, that ain't realistic. <laughs> <It's> like you... <laughs> what the... It's in the box. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Destined to be here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. Damn. Hallelujah, babe. There's a lot the director is trying to tackle with this film right here. And where it worked for me was with the performances. 
You know, for one, I thought Lakeith Stanfield. I think Lakeith Stanfield is an actor that is continuing to grow mm-hmm. as we watch him. I think he's, you know, a lot of a lot of things that we see him in. You know, for years he's kind of played Lakeith Stanfield, but I think we, you know, speaking of him being uh, trying to be Jesus in here, you know, he was a he was a Judas at one time. Yeah, I think yeah. since that movie, we've been seeing Lakeith Stanfield really grow. Even in something like the Hunted Mansion, I think we're trying to even we're starting to see him be, you know. We tried. Did you see the Hunted Mansion? I did. Okay. I did. He's like, he's not good in there. <laughs> I I thought I, I thought he tried. I thought yeah. No, oh, yeah. No, okay. <laughs> you don't want that on your resume. I was in this movie and I tried. <laughs> I thought that, that movie brought brought everybody down. I don't think that movie was very good, but I thought I do see him, you know, trying to tackle different range roles. And, you know, with this one. I think I see him even growing more because in this, he plays two roles. Uh, he plays Clarence, as we've seen here, and he also plays his uh, his twin brother, Thomas, who was a disciple of Jesus, but left his sick mother to to be that disciple, which is one of the reasons why Clarence is such a, you know, a, a doubt about Jesus and, uh, and, his, and his disciples. Um, and I like the way, you know, Lakeith Stanfield played it. Thomas's self righteous towards his his street hustling brother and Stanfield plays them kind of differently enough to where they're two different people, but he keeps it kind of subtle. You know, I don't have to know wacky freaky Friday type thing or anything like that with this. Uh, you know, one is not the evil twin, the other guy's, you know, the cool <laughs> twin. Yeah. Uh I think Clarence is fun to watch. You know, this is a typical underdog story, man. You know what you listen, I'm gonna tell you what this is like, if you really want to know. For me, uh I like Clarence, and for me, Clarence, Clarence is like if you look at him right here, it's Clarence. Clarence to me, and he was like Aladdin, because Aladdin is that street nobody, but he's trying to con people into thinking that he's something important or more important than what he is yeah, until he yeah. actually finds actual self worth through sacrifice mm-hmm. and giving. I was like, man, this is this, he runs through the streets like Aladdin. All yeah. he needs is a monkey. Yeah, yeah. Man, they want to do that because that's racist. <laughs> <laughs> so, nah, man. So you know, I was, and I'm not even making a joke. I was like, this character is like that. So I like watching. We always like characters like this, man. And and, and Clarence is, uh, you know, not too much different, you know, and, for, and everybody likes the underdog story because that character actually has an arc and has to grow. Right. So it's cool to see where, you know, as how Clarence matures, you know, Clarence is a different person by the time we get to the end of this movie, even though they show you very clearly where he ends up at the beginning of the movie. So mm-hmm. no, no big spoilers right here, but I won't even tell you uh, to prove that he's a messiah. He's tasked with doing impossible feats and. Through them, he starts gathering these allies like he's Robin Hood or something, you know. So, <laughs> but I would say I say this because I think one of the one of the most entertaining actors in the movie is Omar Sy. You might know him from uh, Lupin, uh, which is also on Netflix, the French show. Uh, he plays ba- Barabbas. Bar- Bar- Barabbas. Barabbas. He's a gladiator that uh, was won over by 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 Clarence. And you know, I think I think a lot of the audience will come out liking this guy. Because again, Omar, Omar Sa, he's, he's, Omar. he's always been full of charisma. Oh yeah, he's got great charisma in this, and he gives some of the. To me, for a movie that's you know trying to be a comedy in most parts, he has some of the best comedy. He actually in had my, yeah, yeah. my 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 biggest laugh in the movie. Yeah, I know yeah. which one that is. Yeah, I, too. I, I, I know that was one that is. Off guard. <laughs> well, I heard your ass laughing the theater, man. Yeah. For that part. Yeah, the movie like stopped. With yeah. It. Yeah. <laughs> it caught a lot of people off guard, man. I got some positive things to say about this, but also has some criticisms. But let me pass it on to you. Well, you know, when you're talking about uh, positive things is that this movie is very creative and it's bold um, and, you know, doing something <laughs> I want to say kind of different. I mean, it's kind of different, kind of not. But uh, and Lakeith Stanfield, while I'm still not sold on him completely, I still think a lot of this role is out of his range. But you you bring up a good point is how well he's able to play Clarence and play Thomas and make them feel like two separate two people. Two different characters, yeah. People. And and also o- Omar Sy and just some of the some of the cameos here and there are, yeah. are fun. Yeah, no, they are. Nah, uh, Lane <clears throat> Key Stanford. I, I, I feel like to me he's one of those actors I never had to worry about for a role. I'm just like yeah. whenever I see him in a movie, I'm like, all right, I know he's gonna. Be I good. like him. Yeah, no, no, he's I like great. him a lot. Yeah, I think he's an amazing actor. In this one, I did feel like he was too Lane Key Stanfield though, and not like really. Yeah, like I didn't feel like he was like expanding his range because I didn't. Feel, I felt the opposite. I was like, this no, is. No, I, I didn't. I felt. I felt like he was like that in like a lot of other movies that I've seen him in. 
But uh, man, there's all around like great cast here. That's one thing I praise the movie about is that this yeah. had a great cast attached to it. I feel bad. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm betraying my people here. But <laughs> I'm gonna say one of my, one of my favorite. I think my favorite actor. Uh, in this, you know, Omar Sy is like my favorite guy in here because of, you know, again, uh -oh. his cut. You go where I think you're going. I'm going. <laughs> and I'm going there. If you think I'm going there, that's why I'm going. Omar Sy is one, he might be my second favorite guy in this because I think he has some great laughs and he's, he is very charismatic. Mm -hmm. But somebody who was only in here for a short amount of time, somebody we haven't seen for a while, who I already thought was a brilliant actor, yeah. is uh, James Matthews. I knew it. Yeah. I mean, I'm such, <laughs> How did I even go with even, that? He's like, Please. <laughs> well, to, you don't expect him, even though when you see him on the poster, I didn't even know that was him it's, it's until he crazy. started acting in it. And yeah, him as, as pilot. I was like, this Pontius is pilot. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. It's, it's crazy. He's in a trailer a lot. Yeah. So you think he's in the movie a lot. Mm -hmm. No, he's, he's in the movie not. for a short period of time, man. He plays Pontius Pilot in a, in, a, in a smug way like you expect that like that that character to be. But man, James McAvoy is, is an amazing actor. He's, he hasn't been around a lot lately. Mm. And just the the short amount of time that he came in, he still, even for being a you know a smug, I guess, villain in this, he's but, he's still very charming and very funny. It, that's the thing. I, Pilot is only so, he's more of an anti-hero than a villain because it's like yeah, he does like you know say like hey, all right, let's crucify Jesus, but he's like I don't want to be here. Right? Like, yeah, y'all yeah, yeah. making me There's do lot, this. I yeah. just can, hey, can you just say this? No, okay, I wash my hands. I, <laughs> I, I tried. I tried. There's hey, a lot of comedy hey, to his character. Yeah, it is. Yeah. He's very charming and very funny in the short amount of time he's in there. I just like, damn, boy, he's 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 really still in these scenes that he's in right now, man, That's from true. everybody. He's he was he's great in this, man. Uh and there I'm not gonna say anything, but some of you might already know, but Lee said the better, but I would just say there's a cameo in here <laughs> and that becomes the best joke in the movie. Oh yeah, I was, I was dying laughing. Yeah, and it's a it's a very it's a joke, but it's a very uh, uh, smart joke. It's a it's, you know it's a very smart statement. It's very clever, mm -hmm. and it's all done by this particular cameo that's in the film. I and I thought, wow, if I could say his name, I would say that's one of my favorites in the movie too. Also, with this movie, man, it looks great. I love the locations, and that's supposed to be Jerusalem. They shot this in Italy, <laughs> so yeah. I was like, you know, good for you, man. Yeah. Sets, costumes are great, and it's interesting to see the. And what's cool here about also what they're doing with the the biblical themes here is interesting on how they are connecting this to the biblical influences for this movie. Mm -hmm. You know, if you watch this, you'll see the Ten Commandments. Yeah, mm -hmm. you'll see you'll see Ben Hur. Now they're, they're trying to the movie ain't got that kind of budget to capture that the epic scale of those films, mm -hmm. but what what they have they've done an, they've done an, an impressive job. But also the comedy that's in this, because this is a comedy, uh, the comedy that's in this, uh, some of you might already recognize this if you're old Monty Python fans, uh, The Life of Brian. Friendly persuasion. In those days, getting stoned wasn't against the law. It was the law. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no it, ain't, it ain't that level of comedy, but, but there's a lot of commentary that they've done with, you know, with, with, um, the story of Jesus and that this it's kind of similar to what they do here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, you know, and, I, and <laughs> it, it, it also had some of the way some of the things they do away set up reminds me of a Knight's Tale. Yeah, because yeah, it you know it can get very anachronistic bringing in modern music and having everybody dance to it and all, and then going back to the well, story. I kind of like that that they've taken these biblical themes and combined it with black culture. Now this is where the ambition becomes a little uneven for me, because sometimes it works. And it works with where you, you know, where you're saying it works. Uh, James Samuel, he also composed the music here. He's a director, writer, and composer, which is, I guess, you know, that was his, uh, his 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 producer musical name the bullets because uh, you notice uh, okay. yeah because yeah. you notice he he wasn't the bullets for this he's like I'm Samuel James the director <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but um some scenes were modernized in a really clever way man at least I like the way the way I like them uh you know there's some uh, scenes in here like what what Martin was saying you know there's some scenes where uh you know they are. Cause I remember the scene here where they went, they go to a, you know, a drinking den, you know, equivalent of a bar, but it turns into a club. Yeah, you know, they yeah, playing yeah. neo soul music and line dancing, line dancing, yeah, yeah, and it's a nightclub, and it's and for me that worked. I actually liked that, man. Uh, other times the movie stops to make statements, 
about modern issues with, with black society, black culture, you know, uh, police harassment, police brutality. Some might see it as, as, as clever and others might see it as, you know, being too obvious. And, it's, and it stops the movie. Uh, to me, I, it didn't bother me a whole lot, but it did kind of just seem like the movie stopped to make these statements. And I don't think it really, you know, uh, it was, it was, I thought it could have been done either more subtly or it could have, you know, they could have flowed into it a little better, you know, because they really stopped to say, hey, and this is what is happening today. So I was like, all right, you know, I could, that could have been done just a little more clever for me. It's taken on so much too that sometimes the, 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 the comedy, doesn't always transition with there are some more serious parts with the movie you know it's uh deadly serious mm -hmm. and they'll go from i mean with a with a jump cut they'll go from a comedic scene to somebody getting their ass whooped they'll go from <laughs> slapstick I mean, yeah, to, yeah. to something where they're trying to make you cry you're like oh, look god damn it yeah, like, you can't go back and forth now <laughs> yeah, they jump cut and he's kind of like wait a minute shit i'm trying to squeeze these tears out man <laughs> you know oh i was like man i was having fun what you doing yeah you know it doesn't again transition very smoothly into that for me like you said, even, you know, uh, uh, slapstick is goofy sometimes. Uh, but, you know, this was less of an issue. It actually picked back up later in the movie. But it's, a, it's less of an issue later in the movie for me than it was in the beginning. Because in the beginning, you know, the, uh, I think later on the movie found its balance. But early on, it, 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 was, it felt very unbalanced. You know, it's early on the, the, the a lot of delivery on the jokes fell flat and like they did not know how to end certain scenes where there was humor. You know, there would be a line for a joke to be delivered. It just did not have a good punchline. And the scene just kind of ended flat. Uh, you know, the dialogue was not effective. And later on in the movie, they, it seemed like the movie kind of found its footing a little bit better. Still not perfect. Uh, as I said, those disruptions started happening near the end a little bit more. But. I, I was really enjoying it later on, man, once I really got kind of used to what the director was trying to do. Even though, again, being this ambitious, I don't think it always worked. I thought the the, the romantic subplot was handled well, mainly because that girl is beautiful. I forgot her name, man. And, and who's her, what's her name? Chat, help me out with this. What's this girl? She's a model and she's a, she's, I thought she was, she was, uh, she was very good. And that's the gangster's little sister, the one that Clarence is after. I thought the romance worked pretty well with them, man. I thought they had nice chemistry. And like I said, man, it was nice to see black people have that kind of, that kind of romance subplot right there. I admired this movie for all it tried to do. And it got more entertaining as it went along. The most clever moments in the third act. Did you look up her name? Hmm. I thought you were going to put that. Wait, not the one. <laughs> no, what did you do? No, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Anna, Anna Doy? Oh, somebody said Cameron Diaz. Who's playing? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, she in trouble if that's her. Uh, uh, Anna Diaz. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Anna Diaz, man. But yeah, uh, to reiterate, once again, I admire this movie for all it tried to do. Did it always work? No, but that's what happens with movies that get too ambitious. But I admire somebody trying to do that from a creative angle than, you know, doing this from a lazy, humorous angle or mm -hmm. doing this from the angle where this, you know, just trying to do a money grab. Uh, I felt like he was stretching himself creatively and not in much respect for that, even for the parts that always didn't seem to work that well. Uh, and like I said, the most clever moments in the movie come along in the third act for me. So I left with some good laughs, too. So I'm going to give this a low matinee. Uh, yeah, you know what? You, you're, you're right. It's creative and it's not lazy. And I admire it for what it tried to do. Yeah. And what it tried to do was too goddamn much. Oh, oh. There was just too <laughs> much, too much going on with this thing. It was like a crazy quilt that had all these different parts that it never was able to weave smoothly from one thing to the next. It was like it was just stacked together. Like, like you didn't buy a Lego set. You had somebody, a bunch of le leftovers that were poured out and you just start building stuff with it. And yeah, I just feel like it never smoothly went from one thing to the next. Some of the writing is is really bad. And then some of it is is fun and it's good. And it was just never consistent. You're right about the the unevenness. That, that was so much more in, in the first half of the movie. Uh, the second half, it's still not even. It's still uneven, just not as much as it was. It it started kind of finding its footing. The funny thing is, I went into it cold, mm -hmm. and I was watching this, and I and, and my thought was, man, 
I wish the guy who did The Heart of the Fall made this movie because he would know what he was doing. <laughs> so then, oh, <laughs> then after I'm like, oh shit, that was him. Um, but you know, it's, I mean, it's doing some things like, yeah, Jesus as, as Neo from The Matrix. I'm like, all right, man, I guess. I, I just I just thought it was kind of all over the place. And uh, I mean, it, it keeps you interested because it's like, what's it going to do next? But I just didn't have the the enjoyable experience that you did. This is this is definitely a rental for me. All right. Julie. The shit. God damn. Well, see, I went to this cold, too. Like, only reason why I know about this movie is because I was watching like a football game and the trailer popped mm, up. Yeah. And I was like, oh, OK, I'm kind of intrigued with this. Uh, I, I'll say this. As it goes along, I feel like the movie gets a lot better because then I feel like like that first ten minutes was just kind of rough for me. Yeah, I, was I just like, too. I was like, God damn, I don't want to be here for this. I was like, I know it's a full black cast, but I don't want to be here. But like I said, it gets uh, better as it goes along. Uh, amazing cast, man. There's some cast members I wish would have got more screen time. Mm-hmm. Uh, mainly, uh, mm-hmm. his name Tiana Taylor. Yeah, no, no, I feel like I'm saying it wrong. I feel like I'm saying it wrong. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you okay. say that. Right? Uh, yeah, I, she was great, but I don't. She wasn't in it enough. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She's kind of like a like a little bit in a cameo. I yeah. feel like um, my favorite actor. I think his name was R. J. Uh, Tyler or Taylor. He was the. Uh, he the was like his right hand. He was the, yeah. He was like. Oh right yeah, hand. he was also in the the heart of the. the oh, he fall. was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You no, know, I thought he was great. My favorite character. Uh, one thing about this movie. This movie has an amazing soundtrack attached to it. It uh, does. Uh, yeah, like I think it's uh, Jay-Z and some other people, but it's an amazing soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, my, my biggest complaint, I feel like, was probably Lanky Stanfield, um, just because I wanted him to like kind of show a little more range than he showed here. But I think he's still he's still a great actor uh, overall. Uh, another complaint I do have real quickly is I feel like the movie was a little too long. I feel like it overstayed as well. I do too. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how. It, it is you. over two hours long. It did not need to be. I yeah, yeah, know. yeah. Because it, it felt like it was throwing in extra sub, subplots and jokes. And I was right. like, can we just get this to where we're going? And I feel like some of the subplots weren't even like focused. Like I know you were talking about the romance subplot. I didn't think it was written that good, honestly. Um, but that's just me. Um, I'm just no, give... no, it's me too. Oh, you didn't? You didn't? Yeah. yeah. So I just thought I'm, I'm giving, it, giving it a mad name, honestly. Mad name? Why higher than me? Wait, what'd you give it? I gave it a low mad name. Oh, low mad name. Then. <laughs> don't do what I do. No, look, like, like, honestly, I thought I was gonna go into this because, man, y'all know I love me some black films, so I thought yeah. I was gonna go into this with a full price, you know, a better than sex, <laughs> something like yeah. that. And I was like, now I, I kind of was disappointed. Yeah, I, 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 you know what? Given that uh, the, when I saw the trailer, I thought the set, that I thought the satire would work better in here, mm-hmm. and it it doesn't. You know, it, it, it just felt unfocused. Yeah, yeah, no, it's kind of all over the place. And again, I can understand some people not being with that. You know, like you, yeah, you man. know, and then there's some things that appealed to me that made it all right. I because st- I still enjoyed it. I had fun with it. Uh, I think I because I think the movie ended on a higher note than on a, you know. Then it started. So I, yeah, that's. I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah that's all. I, you know, I, I, but I get it though. It's not gonna. This is not gonna register with everybody. You know, because like like with Martin, they'd be like, "Well, I can't keep up with this." <laughs> you know? I mean, I just kind of just went along with the ride. <laughs> so, I don't know where we going, but <laughs> I ain't got nowhere to be. <laughs> Low Madney. Rental and uh, matinee. I'm you sticking with that matinee because nah, yeah, no. that was it. That's what you said. That's what I, you forgot, said. I forgot we can do loads. And you shit. ain't going. <laughs> uh, get your own shit. No, I forgot we can do loads. <laughs>